This video is about custom processing at Knudsen's Meats. Um, whatever, nobody wants that cut. This is burger. Just gotta get some of that off. Okay. For starters, pull in. I'm looking to not cut into the flank, but try to. Oops. We want to try to get the flank, that fat peeled away from the flank. Remember I told you we're going to outline the tri-tip? So I'm finding the tri-tip muscle and I'm just going to cut off this fat so I can really see the tri-tip good. And then when, once it hits the table, it's going to be pretty easy. But this was kind of a newer cut for us to learn was the tri-tip. Okay. That's all right. Now we're coming across the front here, pulling back and cutting out some of the stack. Sweet, so, and you can see, I'm not gonna go all the way around the plank, but about there's a good spot to say, okay, that's good. And then I'm gonna trim off a little bit of this wasty fat. So this is, this is where we're falling. And now that I've outlined the tri-tip, I can see where the tri-tip is. I'm not cutting into it. That's another nice trick, is getting that tri-tip outline. So I'm just kind of going to look right here and see. There's the meat down here. I don't want to cut into the meat. You know, maybe, maybe my guideline will be right there. So I'm going to just kind of cut down. And then I can see right here, too, on the inside. I said you just don't want to cut into that meat. Now right here is going to be where the, that butt tender is, the tenderloin is. And I usually make my first trim up here. This is a nice fat one. Looks like they finished it well. So, ah. but that's pretty much. So you make sure your knife's pretty sharp. And then you start with the tri-tip muscle. It's called the tri-tip because it's got three tips on it. It kind of intersects where all those muscles meet. Now that I've outlined it, you see this is where our sirloin tip will be. I cut into it a little bit, it's not gonna be a big problem. But now that I've outlined it, I can follow this, this muscle around. And as you're cutting around this muscle and following the outline of the tri-tip, this is gonna make it really easy for you once you hit the bony tip. So that's good. Probably get a little bit bigger knife for cutting off the ball cap. So you kind of start up here and you look for that bone and then I use the tips of the knife to get on on each side. So we're using some good knife skills here. You can also use one of the bigger breaking knives. I usually like to, to get this, uh, find that cap and get that out. You can see there's synovial fluid or joint juice. So usually grab a towel or something so nobody slips and falls. But we got a good start on that. So, and then the right knife for the right job. It's our breaking knife. Just follow the bone. And there's our sirloin tip or ball cap. So what I like to do is I'll pull it up. You don't want to cut too far down or you'll cut into the tenderloin. Just kind of pull it up and then cut across. So you can see there's the tenderloin right there. The rest of the sirloin tip. Let me throw it over here. Okay. And uh, last but not least, you can see where I'm at. Tri-tip's peeled. We've cut out the sirloin tip. And right here is gonna be, somewhere in here is gonna be the magic joint where the, the hip bone and the femur interconnect. So with a bigger knife, you just kind of cut it. And I'd say it's beginner's luck, but I've, it's not always, you don't always find it on your first thing, but after you get kind of an idea how that bone works, you can just kind of find it there. Now that you found it, you can saw through. The thing is, if you don't find this joint, you're going to be sawing through a lot of bone. So if you find the joint, kind of work on your right hand or right arm. Sweet. So, and I usually take it to about there and the rest.
probably get a good sized knife. Boom. And then over to the saw. So here's the nice way to find the where the where the porterhouse meets the sirloin is gonna be this little muscle joint right here. So this will help you make a, an accurate cut with short line. Okay, so you can see there's a pin bone steak and then we'll be peeling that up. Round, have bottom round, top round, and eye of the round hanging out here. Usually I just start my cut right here below this tendon. And then I just use my knife to kind of go along and cut in. And then it gets to kind of a point where I'm not cutting into this muscle. I like to use this for making some nice ase buco soup bones. And then I just kind of follow, follow that down to the femur. You know, so we're kind of working our way down that way. I cut into a little bit, but that's okay. Okay, so that'll be that'll be kind of step one. Now we're gonna we're gonna follow this right inside by the femur bone. And the thing is, if you you kind of get both of these sides, now that we've made those guidelines, you can peel back here and really pull. And then as you cut with your knife and pull with your body, it'll just kind of start to just come right off. See like that? But that's, that's gonna... This is where I always run into... Yeah, this gets a little tricky here. So now that I've got down here, again, we're gonna find that knuckle, uh, the knuckle of the femur, femur. So I just kind of went, and it's connected with this little joint. Once you cut it off, you should be about good to go. This bone kind of circles around. So I try not to cut off too much of the meat. And then you get to the point where it's like ready to almost fall. And then I just usually grab it like that, make sure it doesn't hit the ground. Cool. Rib section today with a bandsaw. Um, make sure that this is set up. This guard has to be set up, so for safety. And then when we're cutting it, you want to leave about, I'd say two to three inches there. So we're going to follow that. It's always better to have more than less, okay? This, this will go in the boning section here. That's that and that. And then uh, they want short ribs. They don't want short ribs, but I generally will cut that off. And uh, if you want to take out another bone, make it free so the wrappers can wrap it good. Uh, so now we're into this rib section. It's got the bone here. Now what we want to do is cut off a section here on the outside. And then, now that we've done that, we can lean it back. And right here, you'll see where the, the bones kind of come together. You want to cut right in the middle of those circles. Sweet. So now, now we can take our knife and cut that out. It should be good to go. Please like our Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel and make sure you go to our website at www.knutsonsmeats.com to learn more about custom processing.